Ladies, gentlemen, and arisen of all ages, the more you play Dragon's Dogma 2, the more you realize just how little of this game you may have experienced compared to what you thought. There are constantly new things popping up, and even if you think that you've done every quest in the game, that still doesn't mean that you know everything that could possibly happen, that you've experienced every possible quest ending, which is sort of extra fun in this game with its whole underlying lore of the cycle in alternate worlds, where the same cycles take place in slightly different ways, so one possible quest ending can be canon, while a different ending entirely can also still be canon, because they just take place in separate rift bonus. Okay, okay, that stuff aside though, today is specifically talking about quests. And I have in the past talked about a number of quests that are easily missed within this game, but definitely worth still taking the time to do. And today is quite similar to that, with just a nice little collection of quests in Dragon's Dogma 2 that either the majority of the player base has never really found, or at least the ones on the list that they have found have multiple endings, and at least one of those alternate endings being extremely uncommon for players to get. So we'll talk about what these results are, so you know what you missed out on without having to do a whole other playthrough to get to experience these other options. Starting off then, we have a common quest with an uncommon ending. This is Pray for the Pack. When you first reach the checkpoint Rest Town to the west of the map, there will be a commotion going on because a young boy has gone missing and his grandfather, the apothecary, is begging for your help. After doing some sleuthing, you can realize that the boy has an affinity for moon glow flowers, and you find out where he was when he was taken by the wolves, so you are then tasked with finding him. The trick to doing so is literally to just follow the flowers around, which is easier to do at night, but this is actually a timed quest. If you go and deal with it within reasonable time, you can find Raj in a cave full of wolves, you kill the wolves and then escort Raj back, everyone's happy, and you also get a discount at the apothecary as a reward. This is what most people have experienced. However, if you don't do it in time, you can eventually time this quest out. A soldier will show up at the bridge entrance to the checkpoint rest town, who will just mark the cave on your map for you because you failed to find it in time, and when you eventually arrive there, you will find no Raj, just a token of torn cloth to bring back to prove that he was, well, at one point, in that den of wolves, but isn't currently. At least, you know, most of them isn't, unless you count being inside of the wolves as being inside of them too. But, you know, get the point. You bring the cloth back to the grandfather, the apothecary, and he's obviously sad. He thanks you for trying, and, you know, you get some gold in return for actually doing that, but it's obviously not the good ending, but it's also not a common ending, so I thought it was worth talking about the fact that the kid actually can die. Then we have the Jadeite Orb Quest, which is a really cool one, in my opinion, for the different ways you can do it. It is also nearly unavoidable in the checkpoint rest town when you first arrive, but there are so many different ways that this quest can actually go. This is centered around two NPCs, Off Louvre, who is potentially parting ways with his employer, let's say, and is trying to get hold of the Jadeite Orb, which he previously lost. Everard is the other NPC who is trying to recover the Jadeite Orb to its supposed original owner, who is Everard's boss. The actual Jadeite Orb then is for sale at Ibrahim's scrap store, but you can't give it to both of them, right? There's only one. Or is there? Well, let's go over the various outcomes of this quest. Outcome 1, give the actual orb to Afluv and tell Everard that you just couldn't find it. Outcome 2, give the orb to Everard and tell Afluv that you just couldn't find it. Both of these result in you getting some minor rewards from their respective NPCs. Outcome 3 is you create a forgery of the Jadeite orb and give it to Afluv. This one is fucking hilarious to me because he intends to sell it to trade it in in order to cross the border, so if you rest a few days and then return to the rest town, he will walk up to you and actively tell you that the orb that you gave him seems to have been a forgery because he's still here and he's laughing about it, but then he says that he's sure that you meant him no ill will, right, buddy? But if it was intentional, you should know that he would slap the shit out of you with a spoon if it was the only weapon within reach. Outcome four, you make a forgery of the orb and give it to Everard. Following this, Everard will take the item to, hilariously, Ibrahim, the one who makes forgeries, to have it validated as a true item. If you just let this happen naturally, Everard will find out it's a fake, and he and his friends will attack you to try and bring you to jail, but if you defeat them, then nothing bad actually comes of this long term. Outcome five starts the same as four, Everard goes over to get the orb appraised, but if you then talk to Ibrahim while he is appraising the forgery, you can bribe him to say that it's real. But he keeps taking the money and saying no, and saying maybe a little bit more might do it, so you end up giving him like thousands and thousands and thousands of gold to just say that it's real, which he does in the end if you give him enough, and this gives you the rewards from both NPCs. Then we have the real fun one, in my opinion, which is outcome five. This involves minor spoilers for the Sphinx encounter in the game, so if you are avoiding spoilers for that, skip to the timestamp that is on the screen right now. With that said, one of the Sphinx's riddles asks you what item in your inventory do you consider the most valuable? If you agree to then let the Sphinx have that item, you will instead get it back and have a duplicate created as a reward in the chest. This can be used to manually duplicate any item in the game, including the Jadeite Orb, and you can then bring two genuine Jadeite Orbs back and hand them in to both NPCs, which actually genuinely counts as a separate quest ending that shows up in your journal, and I just love that they actually considered that players could do 
do this and acknowledge this and actually reward you for doing it by giving you this special journal entry that mentions that you somehow got two actual genuine orbs. Then we have our third quest, a case of sculptor's block. First up, in order to get this to begin with, you have to wander to the right section of the noble quarter in Vernworth to have the NPC pop up to ask for your assistance. But you also have to do this specifically after you have reached the point in the story where you head to Batal. This NPC is a patron of a specific sculptor in back Batal and has requested that you go get the sculpture from them and bring it back so that he can show you his collection, which sort of just sounds like a hilarious way to just walk up to someone very capable and tell them to do something for you for free. Upon visiting the sculptor, he will mention that he is tasked with sculpting a griffin, but is struggling for a reference, sort of. So he asks you to help him get a good sketch of a griffin by fighting one in front of him so he can see it in action without being in danger. From here, there are three outcomes. The first outcome is the one that probably the fewest amount of people will actually get because the game tells you over and over and over again not to kill the griffin quickly. But if you just sort of use your overpowered character and go all out because you're likely over leveled at that stage, kill the griffin in like 20, 30 seconds, the sketch will be incomplete. The resulting sculpture that is made from it is, according to the cutscene that you get, an appalling piece of shit. It looks fantastic in my opinion, but everyone is just mouth agape at how awful it is. And you just don't get much of a reward for doing that. And honestly, I think that ending is pretty funny. Outcome two is you fight the griffin particularly slowly, really let it do its thing before beheading it. Fulvio gets a good sketch. He makes a great sculpture from it. And it's worth mentioning that he does actually mention out loud when he's got the sketch done. You, at the end of this, you will get a cutscene of everyone enjoying it and everything's lovely. Everyone's happy about it, but they're not absolutely blown away. But then we have option C, which is to go and kill a Medusa. The easiest way to do so being to be a warfare with the soporific arrow skill from Magic Archer, then any melee weapon. Put the Medusa to sleep, and then you can just chop its head off in a single stroke. This will get you the Medusa head item, which can petrify any enemy in the game. If you bring this to the Griffin where Fulvio is waiting, you can then petrify the Griffin that is there. This will kill it on the spot, so you don't have to deal with fighting it for a particularly prolonged period of time while the sketch is being drawn. But also, this winds up with a fantastic sketch created and a quote unquote unparalleled masterpiece of a sculpture as a result. And the outcome of that is a greater applause during the cutscene, some much nicer words for Fulvio, and a few thousand more gold as the reward for you. So, this is technically the best ending by a good margin. Fourth up today, then, a quest that I bet many people haven't encountered, which is Crossing in Shadow. This quest has a bunch of prerequisites, one of which being the whole Empress assassination quest line, as in all of it. You have to completely wrap that up first. Then you also to have chosen to buy the personal home in Vernworth for 20,000 gold. Otherwise, this quest can't happen. If both of those things have been met and you then sleep in the bed within that home in Vernworth, Empress Nadinia can show up and request a secret escort to the Rose Chateau in Vernworth. This is just a really sort of fun bonus detail, a little bit of political maneuvering that you get to take part in that a ton of people just never find. Unless you happen to be sleeping in the home in Vernworth between completing the assassination plotline and moving into the end game, which is pretty out of the way at that point in the game progression. On top of that, there are also two separate failure conditions during this quest, as if you alert the guards in any way, you will be sent to the jail and no longer be able to escort the Empress, which sort of fails it. So it's just sort of a quaint little extra thing on the side that people can't even necessarily do as a guarantee. Fifth then today is a quest called Clash and Conclusion. This is a sort of offshoot of a story quest, so spoiler warning that both this and the final quest entry today are tied to late story and even post-game content. If you have completed the quest to escort Sir Augustine earlier in the game, then when you are entering Moonglint Tower right by the end, the big tower that's in the final quest, you will have a one-on-one -on -one duel with Ragnall, a famed mercenary who you meet a couple of times along the way through your journey. This quest itself isn't rare by any means, everyone will get here as long as they've done the pre-quest, but it again has multiple outcomes, some of which are pretty rare for people to have found. Outcome one is you just kill Ragnall. You win you beat him. Provided you didn't throw him off the side or something, you can then use a wake stone to revive him if you want to, but he just sort of brushes that off and doesn't have much else to say. Or you can do what I did and just chuck him over the bridge. Outcome two, if you draw the fight out long enough, similarly to the griffin in the sculpture quest, by just surviving without killing him, he eventually will give in. And you'll sort of have an agree to disagree moment, a cutscene popping up where he's like, your heart's not in it right now, let's just, let's do this later. You clearly have more important things. You postpone the duel, you move on. The reward for that is the exalted, a mace for the fighter, as well as a bit more gold then you get for killing him. So this is technically the best result here too. Then there is actually also outcome three, which is pretty fun, but apparently you can just sort of literally walk away from him, literally turn around and go back towards the elevator. And the second you start running, he'll be like, okay, you're a coward. I don't want to fight you, whatever. You don't have to fight me. And then he just leaves. And then the door that he was guarding is just open after that, which is honestly hilarious. That This is once again, another accepted genuine ending for this quest, but you don't get any rewards for that one, obviously. Then our final quest today is in the end game and it's pretty major, but also honestly, problematically missable. Shepherd of the Ponds. In the unmoored world, the endgame, you are asked to tell every 
Overworld or what is coming to try and get them to evacuate their people to the seafloor shrine. You are given some markers on the map with big red beams in each of the main locations to help you do so. The exception to this that is quite an important one is actually the evacuation camp all the way near the tower on Volcanic Island. If you show up here, you will find a golem attacking the city and to defeat the golem, you can talk to Juan Reek, who will actually help you organize an evacuation of all the pawns in the area to get them to the seafloor shrine. And by doing so, you save them. You save the all of the pawns, the place where you literally started the game. It's so just poetic. This is again, a completely hidden quest, but just another little cherry on top that you can do to feel like your journey at the end of the game was perfect, saving even the pawns in the end. And that just about does it for today then everyone, a nice little collection of quests that are either off the beaten path, underplayed by players, or just have either so many different endings or such underpicked endings that I thought they would be fun to just talk about what all the results are for the people who are interested in knowing what they actually feel like. I hope you've enjoyed this video then, and hopefully it has enhanced your enjoyment of this lovely game as well. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage, is, uh, goodbye.